let us talk about the new redshift feature continuous s3 data engine which is available in the preview mode so first let us talk about the use case where this will be useful so on the left side you see there are external data sources of databases or files which is getting ingested into an s3 raw data layer its ingestion could happen through various means the lambda functions or glue jobs or any a custom script or could be third party etl tools right which drop the files into s3 uh, raw data layer on top of that the data getting transformed based on the business rules and aggregated the curated data gets loaded into the processed data layer in again in s3 right the curated data then get put into redshift uh, which will be used by the business users through various uh, reporting tools like a click or cognos or tableau right or any other analytical tools for the data consumption means so let us talk about where the continuous s3 data ingestion will be useful so in the previous use case we spoke about the data from the s3 processed layer to be moved to redshift so in this case someone how to build the etl flow which moves the data from the s3 process layer into the redshift it could be a third party etl flow or you know glue job or s3 copy command right so this is the area where s3 auto copy is going to help right so it's an extension of the s3 copy commands um, so it just you know take the the power of s3 copy command and we can create or translate that into a copy job right so once the copy job is created uh, pointing to the s3 source folder and the target table and the copy job will monitor any new file arrival into the s3 bucket and the path we specified as and when the new files are available which is going to pick up the file and load it into the redshift table right so this is going to be more real time as and when the new files are dropped and it's going to be available in redshift simple isn't it so few things to note uh, as on may 2023 uh, this functionality is available only in preview we can't use it for production workloads and no additional cost to use this feature and only new files loaded into s3 are considered by the auto copy job right if we make updates to any of the existing files which are not going to be considered so let's take a look at a sample copy job right so what you see on the on the top right uh, is basically a copy command until this region here right it's typical copy command so copy into a table from where we want to copy the data s3 path and then iam rule which has access to the above s3 path and then date format and do we want to ignore the header or not and delimiter of the file and so on and so forth and then the last line here job create and the job name auto on which convert this copy command into a copy job So there are few best practices while creating the copy job so the copy job must be created using an empty s3 folder for the simple reason that you know the copy job will only consider the new files if there are going to be any updates or if there are files already available in the s3 folder which are just going to be ignored right and you know use unique file names for each file in a copy job right so which again goes back to the point do not uh, you know update right so do not overwrite or update the files in the source s3 folder so in case if you want to load the file which got already processed by a copy job you can go ahead and run the regular copy command right copy command is not going to track the you know already loaded file so it will pick up all the available files and load it so that's one way of overcoming it and you know if you want to um, you know get rid of all the uh, history of the process file of a job go ahead and delete and recreate the copy job so that file tracking will be reset and all the new files from the um, s3 source folder will be picked up and loaded 
Okay, let us get into the demo and see how it is working in real world. Let us navigate to Redshift uh, and create the cluster in the preview mode. Okay, so on the top, we get a banner to create the Redshift um, uh, cluster with the features in preview. Hit the Create Preview Cluster button. And then uh, just give a name of the preview cluster and track. So I'm going to select preview 2022 where this functionality is available. And size of the cluster for demo, just go ahead and create the bare minimum one DC2. And we can go with one node, right? Uh, and then sample data, I don't want to load it and, and give an admin username and the password. Uh, cluster permissions attach an IAM role which has access to your SV data for the um, loading purpose, right? I'm just going to choose one of the role which has access to the S3. And then go ahead and just uh, hit create cluster. Okay, uh, let us navigate to the query editor. For this demo purpose, I'll be creating a table uh, and then the um, S3 auto copy job, then load couple of files, right, automatically. To create a table named sales pack uh, with few columns. And then I'm just going to check um, if there are any data on this table, it's not going to be, but just Okay, no data available here. Then third step, I'm going to create a copy job, right? So uh, before I run this, let's take a quick look, right? Copy, this is the table name to which I want to copy the data and from the path, right? This is a three path where I'll be uh, having my input files, right? So just go ahead and see here, and I don't have any files available at the moment. Then, um, IAM role, uh, which has access to this uh, S3 bucket and path. I'm leaving these features untouched. It's uh, date format auto, ignore header, and delimiter comma. And then final line job create the job name auto on, which means the job will start tracking the new file arrival into the above S3 path, right? So let's get this created. Okay, done. So again, check the table. There shouldn't be any data, right? So now let's go ahead and um, get our sample file uploaded first. Hit upload, add files. I'll be selecting the sales one and then upload it. Okay, one file successfully uploaded. We'll come to Redshift Query Editor and see whether the data is already loaded. Here you go, right? So the CSV file contained two records. Both of the records got loaded automatically into the Redshift table. Now let us put one more file and see whether that data is getting appended. So hit upload and let me choose another file and upload. Got uploaded come back to Redshift Query Editor and check for the new data. Yeah, here you go, right? Two more records from the second CSV file got loaded successfully. Okay, so now we have this job created, right? So how do we um, kind of, you know, monitor or if we want to run this job ad hoc, what are the options we have in hand, right? Let's take a look at it. So in case if you want to uh, run this job ad hoc, uh, there is a command copy job run and the uh, name of the job, right? So this will run the copy job ad hoc, right? Yeah, but I didn't put any new file, so it's not going to really load anything, but you know, just to demonstrate, right? You can run ad hoc 
and if you want to uh, turn off so when when would you run this ad hoc right if auto on is turned um, turned on then you don't need to really run this ad hoc but for some reason if you have switched off right this auto run functionality then you may want to run it ad hoc right and this is a, a command uh, you know you'll be able to uh, switch off this auto run functionality and from the monitoring standpoint, right? So we have run this job a couple of times in case if you want to look at, right, uh, what happened. So there are a few commands uh, which we can use to monitor this job. Let's take a look at it. So select star from syscopy job. This is going to give an overview of the uh, copy job. Okay, so I have only one copy job available at the moment, uh, which gives details about job ID, job name, and you know which table it is going to load, and what is the data source and associated IAM role and things like. That. Okay, so let me just copy this job ID, and then I will use it in the um, on I'm sorry. Next statement, right? Get a summary of a copy job. So it, this will provide little more details about this copy job. It's a summary of this copy job, right? So it provides, um, you know, that again, the table name and then uh, status of the job completed. And then, uh, you know, the number of rows loaded uh, and the loaded byte and things like that. Okay, so it's, it's basically a uh, summary view of this job for all the runs. And to get more details about each run, uh, there is another um, query which we can run. It basically selects from the STL load commits um, with the uh, copy job ID. Let's go ahead and run this. And in case of uh, any errors which happened during the job run, we can get those error details from STL load errors table. At the moment, I don't think we will have any errors, but let me just go ahead and check for this job ID. Uh, no, there are no records available. All right, uh, that brings us to the uh, end of the video. I uh, hope this was useful. Uh, we will meet again with another interesting video. Thank you.